much would uh, these tariffs impact Apple and iPhone users? Yeah, so um, if you look at sort of how these tariffs would be, would be levied, there would be negotiation, whether it would be 45%, whether it would be 20%, whether it would be 15%. Um, that would be on what we call the OEM price or the, or the, the, the original price of the product. So it's not going to be the $800 or $900 that end user sees. It would be something a lot, a lot less than that. But just for the sake of the argument, let's say that you get down to a number of $35 or $40. In all likelihood, a company as uh, cash positive as Apple and generating what Apple uh, generates would likely eat that mm. uh, charge. Um, and you know, that would really be you know, one of their few options. Another option, of course, would be to pass that along to the consumer uh, or to split that with carriers or to other channel partners they might be selling with. So um, you know, again, it, 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 it definitely hurts the consumer in the right. long term. Would that be advisable given that you've got other smartphone makers out yeah. there right now making decent products for a lot cheaper? Right. So this <laughs> is really, so a Apple's kind of fighting a war on multiple fronts. They are the premium product. They are the premium ecosystem right now. They are not um, necessarily, you know, there's also a huge ecosystem in Android that they're competing with. But what's happening is that in the middle of the market, you're seeing uh, a lot of uh, Chinese and um, other offshore suppliers that are starting to move up and offer really premium products at mainstream price points. I mean, $299, $399, that's getting you four gigabytes of memory mm -hmm. and 32 gigabytes of, of storage and getting you premium battery experience and really strong products so you know if those products um, don't aren't necessarily affected in the same way mm -hmm. because those products you know those are not necessarily US based manufacturers that becomes yet another problem for Apple in this scenario that said aren't most electronics manufactured outside the United States and if this happened wouldn't affect all of those whether it's Samsung or HTC, wouldn't yep. affect everyone equally. Absolutely. This is a global industry, and it's a global industry for a reason. And, you know, interestingly, there's so much automation in, say, semiconductor fabrication, the, the, the factory that you use to build uh, a semiconductor. You actually don't need that factory to be based offshore. That factory could be based here. The reason those are in Asia is because all the other assembly happens in Asia, mm -hmm. and it's more cost effective to have those factories close to the point of final manufacture. So, again, if you start saying, well, this company is the company I'm going to tax, that has downstream ramifications for all the parts right. that get assembled. Now, it's very complicated because Apple assembles the phones in China, yet there are parts of the process happening in Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, Absolutely. South Korea. So, how realistic is it to bring manufacturing or some part of the manufacturing process back to the U.S.? How many jobs would that actually create? Yeah, it would be a relatively small number um, mm -hmm. because what would have to happen is that there would have to be a huge investment in robotics and in automation in order for that to happen in the United States. So you kind of start parsing words here. So what could happen could be that Apple could say, okay, we'll do final software load, we'll do final flash memory load, we'll glue the, the screen on at the last moment of manufacture in the U.S. And does that count as manufacturing? Would that count? Um, well, it depends on, you know, kind of, you know, where the lines get drawn. Um, this, you know, PC manufacturers have done some of that final configuration um, for years uh, in the U.S. You look at a company like CDW, that, that does final storage configuration and final software load in the United States. You know, does that count as manufacturing? It's really final configuration, um, but it does employ people to do that. Now, having said but that, but you're saying realistically, it's not going to be that. Realistically, many jobs. it's not going to be that many jobs, and also it would add cost to the supply chain because those semiconductor factories and those screen uh, factories and those um, uh, you know other electronics uh, assembly factories that are in Asia, those are not moving back anytime soon. So now you're adding transportation cost into the product. Quickly, how many jobs? Hundreds, thousands. Uh, the, thousands. The, you could potentially add. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, it would be. It, it could be measured in low thousands at at the outside. Okay.